Not like there's a lack of news to talk about, but whenever there's anything slow or there's not entirely something that could really fill up in an entire block for a video, you can always just type into the search engine BLM corruption and lo and behold, there was a story from a little while back, okay, February of this year that seemingly slipped under the radar for a lot of people out there, okay, because you got Memphis BLM founder Pamela Moses sentenced to six years for illegally voting. Wow, imagine that. Hmm. Normally, it's uh, not quite the crime of choice for Black Lives Matter, okay? Normally, they're a little bit more violent or a little bit more laundry, but oh, don't fret, we'll get to that. Uh, the founder of Black Lives Matter chapter in Memphis has been sentenced to prison for six years for illegally registering. Yeah, registering registering there's i don't know what registering is but you know what i said it three or four times so whatever to vote in tennessee prosecutors say pamela moses a four she's 44 holy that's a tough 44 uh was ordered to spend six years and one day behind bars monday in regis damn it registering there we go to vote despite felony conviction oh it gets even better i didn't even know that uh felony convictions in 2015 that made her ineligible to do so shelby county district attorney general amy wyrick said oh wyrick that sounds german clearly a racist in handing down the sentence judge michael ward accused her of deceiving the probation department to obtain the right to vote you tricked uh, the probation department into giving you documents a saying uh, a saying I say, I say, you were off probation. How did you trick the probation department? Don't they have access to criminal records? Hey, wow. <laughs> like, come on now. Ward said in the court, uh, Ward said in court, uh, the Washington Post reported, in 2015, Moses pleaded guilty to tampering with evidence. Oh, so she's got a history of doing that. Okay. Uh, with evidence and forgery. Oh, okay. So there, there's the stealing. Okay. Both felonies, uh, and to misdemeanor charges of perjury, stalking, theft under $500 and escape. Holy. She was placed on probation for seven years and deemed ineligible to vote in Tennessee because of the tampering with evidence charged. Moses has maintained that she was under the impression that her voting rights had been restored when she went to vote in 2019. Huh. I was under the impression because I turned over documents that said I could go ahead and vote. I did not falsify anything. Oh, okay, cool. So I guess you're just going to go down with the ship on this one. All I did was try and get my rights to vote back the way people at the election commission told me to, oh, told me, and the way the clerk did it. Oh, clearly. Uh, she said at the hearing, her attorney, uh, Bede Anayawu, whatever, probably paid for by Black Lives Matter, uh, said his client plans to appeal the sentencing. I wonder how well that worked out for her so far. So, so far, so good. Still behind bars. And a future cellmate, perhaps? Depends on how he or she identifies at this point. Black Lives Matter leader accused of siphoning $10 million from charity donors. That's more what we're used to here. The head of Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation has been accused of stealing more than $10 million in donations given to the Marxist movement on the ground. Oh, for on the ground work, according to documents. Shalomon Bowers, who serves as the foundation's three person board that acts as a fundraising umbrella for BLM activism, has been described in a criminal complaint filed by BLM Grassroots. Uh-oh, is this black-on-black -black crime right here? As a rogue administrator and a middleman turned usurper, the Grassroots Group, a California-based nonprofit made up of BLM chapters across the country. Oh, cool. So if we ever need to take down Black Lives Matter, the organization, that'll have to come from the feds. Oh, that's why they've never been properly investigated. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, Zed Bowers was hired to help contact and distribute donations for expenditures within the foundations. Oh, that's what he was doing. Except for uh, those expenditures just happened to be his own bank account. But instead, he used the organization as his personal piggy bank. It sounds like he has a pretty good defense right there. Uh, Bowers' actions prompted the Internal Revenue Service and various state attorney generals to lead multiple investigations. Oh my god, you tell me a group of lesbians who founded Black Lives Matter is going to go ahead and throw a black guy under the bus? That's racism. While BLM leaders and movement workers uh, were on the streets risking their lives, where in affluent white neighborhoods who were all too willing to capitulate to your movement? Okay. Uh, Mr. Bowers remained in his cushy offices. Oh, unlike the, you know, what some of those cushy mansions that other Black Lives Matter founders used 
and purchased with money. So why is anybody filing a lawsuit against them? Uh, in less than 18 months, according to the complaint. Oh, he, he blazed a path of irreparable harm. When Black Lives Matter leaders and movement workers were on the streets risking their lives, Mr. Bowers remained in his cushy office, uh, devising a scheme of fraud and misrepresentation to break the implied in fact contract between donors and Black Lives Matter, the lawsuit states. When Bowers was confronted about the raised allegations, he changed the passwords of shared social media accounts, email groups, website portals, and other tools the movement had built over the years in order to continue fraudulently raising money from unsuspecting donors passing himself off as the organization oh come on black lives matter the organization was already doing that so why'd you have to change everything melina abdullah a blm chapter co-founder and los angeles professor announced the lawsuit in a news conference on thursday saying bowers shut her and other leaders out of the black lives matter social media accounts in march by changing the passwords the los angeles times reported and oh boy they 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 made it personal on this one Okay, so leaders of Black Lives Oof Matter uh, Global Fa uh, Network Foundation, Shamola Bowers, uh, was accused of stealing $10 million from the organization. A lawsuit filed Thursday. According to the Los Angeles Times, uh, the lawsuit was announced at a news conference by Black Lives Matter uh, Los Angeles co-founder Melina Abdullah, who said that Bowers was a rogue administrator, a middleman turned usurper, using it as a personal piggy bank. Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, the non-profit non parent organization of Black Lives Matter grassroots is responsible for the financial management of donations and money distribution of the operating BLM groups. Uh, the infighting between the official BLM groups stems from the recent and more transparent scrutiny over corruption within the organization. Uh, the suit filed by attorney Walter Mosley places blame on the increased scrutiny, especially from the IRS. Wow, isn't this an opportunity for everybody to come together and say that, boy, the IRS sure is unlawful and awful at the feet of Bowers and said that his actions were blazing a path of irreparable harm to Black Lives Matter in less than 18 months. And here's where it starts to get good, guys. Bowers, one of the three directors on the board of Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, shot back at the joint statement that read they the black lives matter grassroots would rather take the steps of our white oppressors all black people involved but okay okay and utilize the cre uh, criminal legal system which is propped up by white supremacy a black person suing another black person over stealing money from a black organization is somehow white supremacy holy you can't make this shit up the same system they want to dismantle to solve the movement's disputes. Oh my God. Bowers said Abdullah committed financial mess or malfeasance. Abdullah said Bowers shut her out of the Black Lives Matter accounts. Uh, Black Lives Matter Global Network is the official parent organization of all Black Lives Matter, including the grassroots affiliate. It raised over $90 million during the latter half of 2020. However, the company distributed $21.7 million in grants and spent another $8.4 million to close the year with a balance of $60 million. Bauer was hired by Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Cullors in 2020. Hmm jumping down a little bit because we know all about the exploits of patrice colors you know the uh aspiring real estate mogul in april reports emerged that colors and blm leadership bought a six million dollar property and curi circuit i've never heard I've, I've seen a lot of words written down before but i've never seen that used properly basically money laundering okay interesting learn something every day moved money around okay circularly moved money around that's a that's basically uh, anyways i'm just astounded i've never seen that word before around a litany of llc's in order to hide the transactions okay cool a month colors described the routine basic form 990 a uh, tax document for nonprofits must fill out as unsafe. Oh my God. Uh, this, uh, this doesn't seem safe for us. The 990 structure, uh, this nonprofit system structure that everybody has used throughout time. It's now all of a sudden not safe. 
Okay, cool. It might expose you being money launderers and thieves. Oh, uh, this is like deeply unsafe. This is a being literally weaponized against us. Okay. I like to use literally for emphasize or for emphasis every once in a while. Okay. When Biden's literally calling half the nation a, a danger to society, that's kind of fun to add emphasis. But when you're unironically saying it and intermixed with saying a like every other word, <sighs> this is this is one of your idols, folks. These are one of the strong figureheads from the movement in 2020. Oh, uh, against, but yes, it's literally weaponized against us, against the people we work with. Yes, the exact same forms that every other nonprofit organization needs to file every fucking year. Just a bunch of people right here not taking responsibility for themselves and then just somehow, okay, even though this is a strictly black issue, finding a way to blame the white man. Unfucking believable. It's always our fault now, isn't it? So. With all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been John Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.